Tell me, Yvonne, what's it like touring Europe like this, doing workshops and conferences and stuff? I On a scale from zero to ten, what's the degree of pleasure you derive from this? I think that it's um, somewhere between a 9.5 and a uh, 10. Uh, I think I'm, I'm a very lucky woman. What, what do you find so interesting about, about conveying all these things about solution brief therapy, solution focus brief therapy? Well, I think that I um, learn as much as I teach. And uh, people have many different answers to what works and uh, what works with their client might be very very different than works with somebody else's and so I constantly am uh, experiencing a growing constellation of new ways to, to, to look at solutions I and mean, it's uh, I feel like it's a big gift I feel very lucky So what works would be the basic tenet of solution-focused therapy then, you would say? Or? I think what works is to always start with competencies the client already possesses. And then to try to make a space where the client can articulate what it is that they want or hope or wish to happen. And then, um, that's not always so easy, but once we have created a context for them to tell us, it's they're often telling themselves too, sometimes for the first time, what they want. Once we do that, we begin to search through their life with them sort of a life review, almost, of um, times in their life when they have had some portion of this hope or dream or desire, uh, some skill that they already possess or an experience or learning they've already had. And we invite them to reclaim that and to use it. And uh, it's... It's not easy work, but it's often very joyous work. I would say that Inzu Kimberg um, had a way of asking a question that made it very clear that she really wanted to hear the answer. She was very, very good at being very congruent and speaking in a way that left no doubt that for that moment all of her attention was on that other person and um, she was very powerful because she was very congruent she also uh, truly wished the other person well she really wanted what was best for them and her body language followed that. She, she deliberately kept a not knowing stance, which meant that she constantly asked questions in a very respectful way. She did not assume that she knew what the person was going to say or might say or should say. She always gave them the courtesy of asking. And this also, I think, allowed her to establish very deep contact with people because it was so safe to get close to her. Insu described him as a creative genius and um, I think I would echo her. He was definitely a creative genius and uh, I think in many ways uh, she inspired him. I, I, as I mentioned before, he said um, in a conversation the month before he died, he said, you know, I've spent a lot of my career trying to make a faithful description of what Insu does. She does therapy 
I've tried to make it clear enough that other people can replicate it, and I think I've finally just succeeded in doing that. And um, I think that they really were a very spectacular combination of together creativity, compassion, intellectual rigor, and precision. And um, I really think that um, they left us a wonderful gift with this approach. I would uh, say that I um, am someone who continues to be their student, and um, I really am still enjoying reading, thinking, kind of following uh, some of the ideas that they left that I'm still exploring. I really enjoy that. Sometimes I think of it almost as playing a similar melody but in different keys. And um, because I um, learned Ericksonian therapy way back in the early 70s and solution focused, I started to learn the beginnings of what later became that in the early 80s. They, I kind of learned them both simultaneously and they always seemed very intertwined for me and um, uh, I never felt that it had to be um, uh, one or the other. I think they, they um, each one can be described in terms of the other. I, I think that good solution focused therapy sometimes looks very hypnotic uh, because we invite the client to describe their hopes and dreams and we, um, in order to answer some of the questions that we ask them about the future, they, they have to uh, suspend their sense of everyday reality, which I think is very trance-like. I think sometimes it's perhaps even easier to do that in a trance, but I think that uh, maybe the crossroads between solution-focused therapy and Ericksonian hypnotherapy is Rossi and Erickson's concept of the common everyday trance that is linked to optimal functioning. And I, I think that 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 in solution-focused therapy uh, have a sort of crossroads at that point. That's how I see the connection. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You ambushed me. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.